Hi guys, look at all this green stuff around me. Are these seaweed? No, they are grass. This is a huge seagrass patch that is normally covered by seawater. Yep, you didn't hear me wrong. Today, we will be exploring this seagrass environment to tell you how amazing it is. Look, it's a feather star. Hi. Hello. So feather stars are not the same as sea stars. They are whole other animal by themselves and they use their long feathery arms to move around and swim in the water. This cute little thing right here is a hairy sea hare. It is usually found amongst the seagrasses and seaweeds. Some species of sea hares do eat seagrasses and algae as well. Okay, bye-bye, I'll leave you be. As you can see, seagrass patches like this are home to many amazing wildlife. But did you know that the seagrass themselves are very interesting living organisms? Unlike seaweed, like the one here and the ones you eat at the restaurants, seagrass are actual plants like the ones there over at the shore, just adapted to live in the sea. Wait, there's a difference? Yeah, seaweed are marine algae. Unlike seagrasses, they don't have roots and instead, something called the whole fast helps them hold onto surfaces fast so that they don't get washed away. Your agar agar is actually made of seaweed. On the other hand, seagrasses have all the features you'd see in land plants. Stem, leaves, roots, and they can even flower. That is because, just like whales, these plants evolved on land but somehow went back into the ocean. Having a robust root system means that they can trap and stabilise sediments, effectively improving water quality and reducing coastal erosion. Being able to trap sediments makes seagrass one of the most important resources on Earth because they can store a large amount of carbon. Let's head over to St John Island's National Marine Laboratory to check out the OCBC Seagrass Restoration Project. We shall find out how these tiny seagrass can hold many times the amount of carbon that a tree can and what these labs are doing to help such ecosystems thrive in Singapore. As of the making of this video, St John's Island National Marine Laboratory is Singapore's only offshore marine station. This place does many different marine-related researches such as corals, giant clams and the one we are interested in today, seagrass. The OCBC Seagrass Restoration Project will be supporting the research here regarding the role of seagrasses in mitigating climate change. And I'm really excited to learn more about it. By the way, did you know when I was in university, I used to do my final year project on giant clams here? Come with me! Hi Sam, I'm back! Hi MJ, welcome back to the lab. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha from the National Parks Board. I'm part of the team that's working on the Seagrass Restoration Pilot Project with OCBC, together with our collaborators from NUS. OCBC is supporting NPARCS on this project to explore how we can tap on seagrass's potential to lock away large amounts of carbon dioxide. Today we'll be planting some seagrass with MJ so we can pop over and take a look. Alright Sam, what are we doing today? So today we are going to plant some seagrass for seagrass restoration. So as you can see here, this is some seagrass that our partners at NUS have already planted in their tanks for experiments. But when we do restoration, we'll be planting them in the field. So today we are going to show one technique of planting seagrass. We can go over there and test it out. Okay, I'm excited. We are going to demonstrate how to plant seagrass using the shoot base method. Uh, this is our seagrass shoot. Uh, what we have here is the sickle seagrass or Thalassia hembrichii. And what we're going to do is to dig a hole in the sand, place the shoot in and then cover it back up. And then pin it with this wooden chopstick pin. So let's try. Make sure that the leaves are, are still showing through because that's where okay. they photosynthesize. This is just regular sand? Yes, oh, this okay. is just regular sand. What's some special sand? The intertidal area, you now push it down and you basically hold it like this. Oh! So this holds it into the sand so that when the waves come, the currents come, it doesn't uh, ah, move the shoot away. Makes sense, makes because sense. Because it's wood, it'll biodegrade over time. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, got it. Okay. So now we can put it back into the water. Yay! So imagine this. When you have meadows of seagrasses with extensive roots holding the sand down, a lot of the dead and organic metal will be trapped alongside the sand as well and they also contain carbon. Because there isn't enough oxygen in it, decomposition slows down, which means less carbon dioxide gets released and large amounts of carbon are locked within the seagrass beds. Oh, the seagrass animals are flying out. Yeah, it's fine. It will settle after a while. Ooh. So in the field, we'll be planting them directly into the sand wherever we are going to restore the meadow. Oh, that's a lot of shoots that need to be planted. Yes, so we need a lot of help with our friends at OCBC. Mm. Bye, Sam. See you again next time. Of course, other forms of nature-based solutions still matter because they help to lock up large amounts of carbon.
between the OCBC seagrass restoration project and other OCBC reforestation efforts in the region since 2017, more than 110 million kilograms of carbon dioxide will be locked away to help mitigate climate change. That's all for today. Just keep thinking.